Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time and this week guys, we're gonna talk about bar by bar analysis. This is how you're going to understand what's likely to happen next, right? What is technical analysis? It's taking past price action to help predict future price movement. Well, there's two ways we do this. Sometimes we do this by looking at bigger time frame charts. You're looking at the whole picture. It's basically like looking at the entire forest from a helicopter, okay? And there are other times where we wanna get more granular and we wanna dig down a little deeper and that's like looking at each individual tree in the forest, the branch, the bark of the trees, et cetera, and so forth. Well, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna get far more granular and take a look at what each bar represents, what that wide range bar, narrow range bar, narrow body bar, bottoming tail, topping tail, with the volume spike, et cetera, what it means and why do we do this? Because we want to take out the subjectivity as much as possible and we want to stay as objective as possible the entire time. Why? Because if you let your emotions creep into your trading, you will fail at this business. Be honest with me. You don't have to answer. It's rhetorical. But you're thinking to yourself, gosh, you know what? I kind of understand the charts okay, but if I would just manage a little bit better, I'd be a great trader. Well, I think a lot of traders say that, right? So while today is not about psychology, but we're going to reinforce why you should likely stay into a trade and also give you some reasons why you might want to get out of a trade. But the difference is we're doing it objectively. Anytime you let your emotions trade for you, you will fail. Let the chart speak to you. Don't speak to it. All right. So this bar by bar analysis lecture, guys, is a good one. It's like I said, it's going to help you get a little bit more granular and hopefully more confident in your trading. If you like these videos, please click that like button, smash, hammer that subscribe button. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. Let's get to it. This week's lecture topic is bar by bar analysis. Um, it sounds so simple, right? But bar by bar analysis can actually be a very granular thing. It can be a very detailed topic. Um, and I highly encourage you guys to really up your game on bar by bar analysis. And one of the main reasons for that is not just because of what it can do for your technical trading, right? When we think about technical analysis, we think past price action, which is helping to predict future price movement. OK, that's great. But one of the other things that will help you do is stay calmer in your trades because you're going to look at that bar and go, oh, well, that's a confirmation bar. I need to just relax and let this thing go. Uh, we were just talking about that with somebody who struggled this past month because they were being overly emotional. Um, emotions have no place in, in trading. The only place that emotions have is reading the chart emotions. But your personal emotions should be pretty bland, should be very objective. Okay, And bar by bar analysis will help you do that. What also bar by bar analysis will help you do is find tops, pivot tops, find lows, look at support and resistance areas a little bit differently because how it reaches those areas, okay? So it should just give you a better understanding of the chart in general. One of the things that we, we often talk about is we look at the forest from above, right? We look as in you're in a helicopter looking down at the forest. Well, think of that as a daily chart, a weekly chart, a monthly chart, a 60 minute chart, the higher time frame charts, that's great. But there are times we want to see what individual trees are actually doing, right? What's the branch and the bark doing? Sometimes traders focus too much on that. And that means, <clears throat> excuse me, they don't understand what's going on around them. But today we're going to do a little bit of both, okay? But before we do that, let us first talk about when will the insanity stop, okay? I hadn't checked my TD account in a year and a half because the GME situation made me depressed and wanted to stay away from stocks for a while. Recently came back to Wall Street bets and stocks. Great. So GME wasn't bad enough that you decided to go back to the shithole that you were in before so you could just step further deeper into it. Yeah, that's great. Just YOLO it in diamond hands with your other WSB friends. Okay, I checked today. And so my account went from 8,000 to 17. Now it's at $6,800. Wait for it. And this is the, this is the, the kicker. This was my college loan money. Wow. 
this, hey, don't worry about it. Didn't it just get forgiven? I just, you know what? I just spun a when will the insanity stop and they just forgave your college loan money. <laughs> Congratulations. I mean, back to a serious point. Guys, what are you doing, man? Why in the world are you gambling away your college loan money? Clearly, and I think there is no greater statement of why kids need to learn personal finance in high school than this statement right here. Don't you find it fascinating? And let me go off on like a 10 second, 20 second tangent that the powers to be, I won't state who they are, the powers to be don't want you to learn personal finance because it's only required in seven out of 50 states in America, but they're going to let you sign for a 20, 50, $100,000 student loans. And then they're gonna come back later, and instead of making the colleges pay for it, they're gonna make the taxpayers pay for your mistakes. Because you took out the loan, why do I have to pay for your mistake, right? But they want it this way, because if they didn't, they would teach you personal finance in high school. This is just doubling down on stupidity, right? Taking out a college loan can be a good thing for some people and for others it's not. And then you go and gamble it away in a YOLO diamond hand stock like GME. Whew, my goodness. This country's got problems, man. It's got problems. Nonetheless, this is what being foolish looks like. Don't trade with money you don't have, right? Don't trade with money you don't have, okay? This is a very serious business, and it happens to be one of, if not the most challenging business you will ever try in your life. And then you're going to try it with money that's not even yours. See, it's different if it's your parents' money, and they're going to be like, yeah, you know, I'm not going to disown you. The bank's going to want this money back. Don't, don't, don't do this, guys, okay? I'm not going to beat this horse anymore, um, but this is what happens when you don't teach young kids about money. All right. And then you give them access to too much money. All right. It is odd the way the world works. OK. All right. Bar by bar analysis. So I alluded to this a second ago. What is technical analysis? Right. It's using past price action to predict future price movement. Right. It's predicting fast past price action to predict future price move. I'm trying, guys, I'm trying to do two things at one time here. Let me give me one second why I sort this out because some people just, there it is. Do, 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 do. All right, so um, what we're doing basically is using charts to help us gain an edge in the stock market, okay? So when you think about bar by bar analysis, this is exactly what we're doing. We're doing the same exact thing, but we're doing it on a smaller time frame versus looking at the entire chart picture. Looking at it and understanding both is the ultimate goal. So meaning you want to look at the, the higher time frame because you always start with that. Other meaning you would never get into a trade without first looking at the higher time frame. So that's just a foregone conclusion. That's a given. Right? I'm just going to assume that you've already looked at the daily chart because if you didn't, you shouldn't be in the trade in the first place. Then we're going to drill down to the lower time frame. What does the current bar tell us about the overall trend and the prior bar that just finished forming? So basically, the most recent bars, the last bar, the current bar, what does it say about what's likely to happen on the next bar, okay? So each candle provides new information. Does this information confirm or contradict our expectation? And that's the key that you have to discern here. This information that we just received, what does this tell us? So it, it's no different than anything you do in life, right? You sit there and the Fed comes out and says, okay, we're going to raise 75 basis points. Well, does that confirm or contradict what your expectation was? And if it does or doesn't, what do you do about it? Does that make sense? See, when we're in an uptrend, green bar, green bar, green bar, well, our expectation is another green bar, right? That's the expectation. But it's not always the expectation because sometimes maybe that third green bar is a wide range bar on volume near resistance. So then our expectation would change, yet it's still a green bar. You see what I'm saying? So new information changes our opinion. But the question about the opinion is, is it confirming or contradicting what we were expecting? 
And then if it does or it doesn't, what do we do about it? So wide range bars tell that, I should say tell us, ooh, that's why I annoy myself with this sometimes, right? Wide range bars tell us that volatility is high and momentum is likely increasing, but always judge this in the context of the overall chart, right? You can't judge this um, in a vacuum. So yes, bar by bar analysis is great, but we still have to judge the higher time frame as well. Narrow range bars tell us that volatility is low and momentum is decreasing. Okay, that's pretty simple stuff you learned in professional trading strategies right there. Okay, we'll take it a step further. The larger the pullback into the prior bar, the more likely or the higher the odds that the original signal might be negated, right? So it's one thing to have a green bar and then followed by a small red bar. But if you have a green bar followed by a 50 or 60% red bar back into that green bar, don't worry, you're gonna see chart examples, don't worry, okay? That's not what you wanna see. That contradicts your expectation and now you have to have, because of the new information, change your opinion or your bias. Now, I wanna be clear about this. I just said change your bias, but that doesn't mean we're ready to act upon it yet. Just because you see one red bar that pulls back 50%, this is not a signal like, get out, run for the hills. Okay, don't worry, we're gonna see plenty of chart examples. Okay, it's not, all right? Eventually, a change of color bar, bottoming tail, topping tail, or wide range bar will form, signaling a likely reaction in the opposite direction. But the question is, when and where will it happen? And will it happen where we expect it to happen? And what do we do if it doesn't? Okay, so how do we know how potent this signal is? Well, the overall trend is gonna tell us how potent the signal we're seeing is, where it occurs on the chart, right? So it's not just where we are, it's also how we got there. So if you're up, you know, three, four, five bars into resistance, well, that's where it's occurring on the chart and that makes it more potent, okay? The level and depth of penetration into the prior bar. So you might look at something that's generally bullish, right? Overall, it's very, very bullish, but then all of a sudden, what? A wide range turnaround bar comes in. Whoa, that was unexpected. Contradicts my expectation. I have to now reconsider the overall strength of this stock. And in my reconsideration, what do I do about it? Does it, does it change my approach? Do I raise my stop loss? Do I get out of the position? What do I do about this new information? Okay, and then obviously you wanna look at overall market conditions. Okay, so you might start seeing some weakness in your stock long before the market shows weakness. Well, that becomes relative weakness and if you start throwing that in with the overall trend, the level and depth of penetration, where it's happening on the chart, all of a sudden you have a recipe to possibly change your approach. That contradiction of expectation might actually allow you in your plan to get out of the position. Okay, so note, it this occurs, look at this, Jared, my goodness, two mistakes and two slides. If, if this occurs before reaching support or resistance or before any significant market move, then the signal is likely less potent. This is a very important note, right? If you just have some kind of halfway random average range red bar in an uptrend, but it doesn't happen with a market move. It doesn't happen at resistance. It doesn't happen on volume. Then there's no really no real reason to get upset. There's no real reason to act upon that one bar's information. Does that make sense? See, we're not just looking for one bar. We're looking for what that bar might lead to and what we might be prepared to do. We might say, okay, well, that bar is gonna allow me to add to my position. That bar might get me out of this position. There's a lot of different things we might do depending on this new information. So bar by bar analysis is a guide and not set in stone. Also note that these attributes are more reliable the higher the time frame is. So if you see this bar by bar happening on a 60 minute or a 15 minute, it's more reliable than a one minute. Why? It's happening over a longer period of time where there's more people committed to it. And that's one thing I think new traders struggle with, right? See, when something happens on a one minute chart, it's not that it can't be potent. Of course it can be potent. 
but it's only one minute worth of buyers and sellers. If it happens on a 60 minute, that's a whole hour's worth of buyers and sellers. So if you have a wide range green bar on a one minute, that's nice. But if you have a wide range green bar on a 60 minute, there's way more commitment there because it happened over a longer period of time with more people and likely over a larger range as well. Okay, so let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. Okay, so bar by bar analysis. This is pretty straightforward stuff right here on the left, right? Must wait for the next bar to enter above the green change in the color. Now this assumes we're in an uptrend. Let's just assume we're in an uptrend. You get red bar, red bar, red bar, and then a green bar. You're looking to possibly enter right here. No big deal, nothing special there. Okay. Over here you have red bar, red bar, green bar, and then this actually ends up triggering, right? Enter above the high of the change of color bar, which is right where this arrow is, and the stop loss goes below here. So, so far you're like, geez, great, Jared. That's like trading 101, duh, I get it. Don't worry, we'll get a little more granular, okay? This is a bullish move. Stick with it, don't let emotions sway you, right? So it ends up triggering right here, okay? And then the next bar is a green bar, and the stock is looking higher. My point I'm making there is this stock is not overly extended. It has done nothing wrong. But yet, what happens to you guys? Be honest about it. Oh, my gosh. I'm up half of an R. I'm up three quarters of an R. Oh, my gosh. I'm up one R. Target's two. You're, you're halfway there. And all of a sudden, you're like, but, 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 but what if it comes back on me? What if, what, if, what, what, if, what if it pulls back? Walk away. Walk away. The stock has done nothing wrong. Everything that you see so far is confirmation of strength. But you're sitting there and the only thing you can think about is negative thoughts of what if it pulls back. I better lock in my money now because it might pull back against me. Yeah. What I find fascinating about that thought process is when the stock is going against you, meaning it triggers you in and immediately goes against you, the first thing you're thinking is, well, maybe it'll bounce back. Maybe it'll bounce back. Maybe it'll bounce back. Well, that's the time you should probably get out of the trade when it goes against you because the more it goes against you, the more, the deeper that level and depth of penetration is, the more likely it's going to fail. But no, you're going to stay in that one. But when it starts going in your direction, that's the one you're going to get out of. It's backwards. It's completely backwards. And that's why many of you listening are struggling traders. It's why you're not a profitable trader yet. But psychology is not what we're gonna talk about today. I am telling you, listen to the bar. The bar is speaking to you here. The bar is saying, stay in me, I'm strong. Stick with me, man, give me a chance, I'm strong. I got you on this, all right? And every once in a while, you'll be wrong, and that's okay. Over here, top right, a green bar that opens 50% or less, gosh, that's the third mistake. Man, what's going on? I must have been drinking when I made this, right? A green bar that opens 50% or less into a prior bar, but closes above the prior bar is bullish. So imagine this is a gap. So you're going green bar, green bar, and then the next day you wake up and it opens where the tip of my cursor is right there. Initially, you're thinking, ooh, a gap down, that's not good. And immediately you're starting to question things. You're starting to be concerned. Relax for a minute. Let the bar trade a little bit. If the bar starts to move up, right, and then breaks the prior bar's high and finishes above this bar's high, that's actually very, very bullish. I'll repeat that. If this current bar that's in orange right here, okay, if it finishes above the prior bar's high by the end of the day, that's a good thing, or by the end of the five minute period, whatever you're talking about, okay? Okay, so when you look at it like that, this is end, ends up being bullish, okay? Now, over here to the second one on the right in the middle, a green bar that opens 60 to 70% or more into a prior bar, i.e. gap down, but closes at or below the prior bar's high is questionable, okay? now. Right here, note, the difference between this one and the top one is the level and depth of penetration. Plain and simple, plain and simple. This one gapped down more. See, this gapped less than 50% on the top. The one in the middle here is gapped down more than 50%, more like 70%. And while it did move higher, which is somewhat bullish, note, it's questionable. 
why did it gap down so much? Well, clearly there was a lot of sellers there. But the positive aspect is it did finish the day relatively strong. So you have two conflicting thoughts here. One thought is, wow, look at the level and depth of this penetration. It's very deep. It's a definite concern. The other part is it did move higher and broke the prior bars high. So that's why it's called questionable. You're going to stick with it because it broke the prior bars high, but it's definitely a little bit concerning. Okay. Next, bottom right, okay, a green bar that opens at or below the prior bars low, i.e. 100% retracement gap down and closes less than 50% into that bars high, I'm sorry, range, range is highly questionable. So this stock, this bar gapped down, complete gap, down, meaning it took out this green bar. Guys, those are typically bearish gaps, right? When we see a green bar negated during a gap, we get generally we get bearish and then it bullies. But when it bullies, okay, it didn't bully 50%, 60% or 70%. It bullied like 30 or 40%. Now, when it says highly questionable, that's putting it kindly, right? Highly questionable generally means bearish. So if you were in a buy setup, okay, and this happened to you, you have to very much question the likelihood of this stock going higher because it's probably not going to go higher. Okay, so this would be a situation where depending on the rules of your plan, you might make an argument to get out of this or raise your stop off or maybe take half off. Now, I'm not saying you should do that. I'm saying you might have that in your plan. Most traders, it's better to let it go simply because, well, they might be newer and they might not be reading the chart clearly or well enough, okay? Now, let's take it another step further. We saw this one on the first slide. Must wait for the next green bar, the next bar to enter, right? We saw that on the last slide, top left. Easy peasy, right? Next one, we saw this, same. You're like, geez, Jared, you're showing me the same. I'm not. I'm trying to get you to think this is how the trade started. This is how the trade started. Three red bars, green bar, then a green bar triggers. After the change of color bar, this bar triggers and we're off to the races. But after this middle one on the left, we go down to the bottom left and then you get what? A little bit of a gap up that fails, right? So a red bar that opens above the prior bars close, gap up, and then closes less than 50% below prior rose high is still bullish but is questionable right it's only one bar it's not the entire trend it's just one bar so while this is definitely not what you prefer to see it didn't penetrate that much into the prior bar it penetrated a little bit but not much so it gapped up that was bullish but then it pulled back Right? And depending on the size of the gap and where it gapped to, a pullback actually might be appropriate and might be somewhat bullish. Why? Because you might have some profit taking. When it pulls back, it may pivot and go higher. Might actually be an opportunity to add some. In this particular case, it is definitely questionable, but overall the trend is still bullish. Over here, a red bar that opens near the prior bars close and closes less than 50% is neutral to bear. So note, the gap up here, top right, top right, the gap up on this red bar was less significant than the gap up over here. So when you think about that, it's less significant, it gapped up less, and it still rolled over. So buyers should not have been exhausted by this point, right? Buyers should have still been relatively potent, but then the stock pulls back and it doesn't just pull back. It pulls back about 50% into the green bar. Well, that's not really what you wanna see, right? You, we talk about it all the time. The level and depth of penetration is so, 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 so important. And the more it penetrates into the prior bar, the more bearish it becomes, the more potent it becomes, okay? Next, middle on the right, 
a red bar that opens above the prior bar's close and closes below the prior is very bearish. So we opened a little bit above this green bar, right? Just a little. And then completely engulfed that bar. Just took it out. Completely took it out. Absolutely, unequivocally, positively not what you want to see. This stock looked really good, right? It had a nice controlled pullback, top left, right? A little green bar change of color there. Middle, middle left, you have a green bar trigger. It moves up and you're thinking, sweet, this looks good. It, it had a good start to this buy setup. And then it rolls over. And then last, bottom right, a red bar that opens more than 50 to 60% into the prior bar's close and closable is extremely bearish. In fact, it's so bearish if it was a buy setup, it would have stopped you out. So these are simplistic bar by bars. We're going to look at three, three charts here and we're going to get a bit more detailed. And I'm using some, let's just call it professional liberties here, meaning I'm assuming, and maybe I shouldn't, but I'm assuming some of you guys understand narrow body bars. I'm assuming you understand bottoming tails and topping tails and engulfing bars, because that's what we're all going to see. So here we talked a, a, you know, a little bit more basically without bottoming tails or volume. The next slides, you're going to see all of it. Okay. So now we're taking a chart and we're breaking it down. We're just trying to read the chart. Okay, now I've said this to you guys before and it's a valuable tool. I know a lot of you guys go back and review your trades and it's wonderful. You should do that for every trade that you take. But you know what you should also do? I'm serious about this, so please listen. Pick a random, whatever symbol comes to your mind. Caterpillar, C-A-T. That just came to my mind. Type it in on a five minute, 15 minute daily chart, whatever. Take a picture of the chart. And I want you, what I want you to do, after you take the picture of the chart, get a piece of paper, and put it over everything. And then just go bar by bar. Just move the piece of paper one bar at a time, one bar at a time. And then ask yourself to predict what you think will happen next. And then see if you're right. Get what I'm saying? So take a picture of a random stock symbol. Could be PDD, could be PXD, could be CVX, I don't care. Take a picture of the chart, take a piece of paper, Go bar by bar. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see? And then ask you of how accurate you were in your description of what you think was going to happen. So over here, we see a stock that was what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, a lot of bars up. Okay. A lot of bars here. There's a little red bar right there, but this was up a lot. Note, it was up one, two, three, four, five, six bars, and then it gapped up. So it was up six bars. Then it gapped up. Okay. Then it moved, had a little red bar, then it moved a few bars higher. And then look, we are very far from the moving average here, right? If you look at this red bar where it says topping tail plus potent change of color after an extended move, we're far from the moving average, we are extended. So when you see this, and by the way, go all the way to the bottom here, right? Let's just do this, just do this quickly so you guys can see it. All right, right there. Just do this. Whoa, messed up. Hold on one sec. Sorry. You see that volume spike? So not only are we up a bunch of bars, not only are we far from this moving average, look at the volume spike down there as well. Okay. And then you get a topping tail as well. So what are we saying here? What are we seeing? We're basically looking at a bar that says, the market or the stock in this case should pull back. It should pull back. And then what do we get? A bar doesn't break the next bar's low, but topping tail. Then we get what? Another topping tail. So note, I want you to take note where it says two more topping tails equal more selling. Okay. This green bar at one point was what? A wide range green bar engulfing the prior topping tail. Correct. This green bar with a topping tail at one point in time, was a topping tail, sorry, was a, sorry, was a wide range green bar that engulfed the topping tail. It was a wide, and guess what happened? It left another topping tail. Sellers came in on the red bar, sellers came in on the green bar on top of this wide range red bar with a topping tail on volume. So what are we getting here? Sellers in control, sellers in control, sellers in control. That's three days in a row where it's clear and obvious sellers are in control three bars in a row because this is a five minute chart 
Then what do we get? A wide range red bar. Wide range bar breaks support, expands the range. We call these range expansion bars. Guys, a range expansion bar is a wide range bar that expands the range. Sometimes they're ending bars, but they're still expanding the range. In this case, you're expanding the range down. And then what do we get after this first wide range expansion bar? Next bar, little bottoming tail. Next bar, green bar. And then wide range range expansion bar. Buyers trying to step up and failing. That's what you're seeing right here. See this little pink box. Inside this box, there are buyers trying to make a fight trying to step up and they're failing every time every time they're failing okay wide range bar comes in note the second pink box doji bar green bar you're like oh okay we're gonna we're gonna finally bounce a little we're not we're below the moving average this wide range bar just took out all of these people here so we're likely to continue lower why because there's nothing to the left this was a smooth move up, and it should continue to be a smooth move down. So the third and final wide range red bar comes in, we put in a bottoming tail, and guess what happens? We go sideways. We bounce, pull back, bounce. What, what happens here? So this was a pretty big move from like 8.53 down to 8.40. Remember, this is a five minute chart, guys. This is happening over a one hour period of time. So for this stock to drop 12 or $13 is a decent sized drop. It's not climactic, but it's a good sized drop. But what's the one thing you notice here? The buyers are really struggling, like significantly struggling to go higher, right? Chop, 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 chop. Every time they put in a bottoming tail and try to bounce, they put in a topping tail, then a bottoming tail, then an engulfing bar, then a green engulfing, then a bottom, then a topping tail. They are fighting it. This is not a V bottom. A V bottom should have a smooth move back up. This is a tug of war going, hey, who's going to win this challenge? Buyers, sellers, buyers, sellers. And I'll be honest, the sellers are winning because the buyers are unable to push this stock much higher despite how pronounced the move down is and what happens ultimately you get a weak bounce right it's ultimately a weak bounce considering how far it pulled back and then it drops below the moving average and puts in one two three four five six seven eight nine red bars in a row note buyers trying to hold on buyers trying to hold on right at the 840 area we bounce back up and you're thinking to yourself finally i'm going to get the reversal Right? If you go bar by bar on this, is what you're thinking. You're going to yourself, okay, double, triple bottom retest, bottoming tail. Okay, wide range green bar comes in. Sweet. We have room back up to like 845. If we break 845, we're going to go higher. And then next bar, red bar comes in. Very potent turnaround bar. Close below the prior bar's low and continued on the next bar. The attempt to bounce has failed. Move is done. You are going lower here. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. The buyers made one last stand on this wide range turnaround bar. They made one last stand on this wide range igniting bar. And immediately the sellers came in and said, not on my watch, man. I don't think so. Not around here. Take that weak stuff home. Okay? Rejection. Blocked at the rim. And then... The move continues lower. Now, once you break below this green line, it is over. This is a very good entry point. But how many of you would have actually entered there? Probably not many of you. But when you look at the bigger picture of how extended it was over here, how weak this stock did on the pullback, three huge wide range bars all on massive volume, and then buyers try to step up and they fail miserably you short this bad boy under that bottoming tail right there i'll put the line on it right there you're going to short this thing right there and the stop loss is the challenge on this where do we put the stop loss that's tough i'd probably try to put it above this wide range bar because if i put it up here it might be too big maybe right maybe it should be here that's where it should be at 8.42, 43, whatever it is. We'll have to wait and see what the risk reward looks like. But that's a great entry. It's not a good entry. It's a great entry. Okay? So that's the support area that gets broken. 
okay? Exactly right. The price gets over that. It's not more or less. It's invalid. You're right if it gets over this where it says possible reversal error. This is how you read a chart bar by bar. This is how you take a piece of paper and just go bar by bar and figure out what's likely to happen next. Okay? I know, Barbara, hence I'm reading all the boxes and enunciating where things are. Okay? Which is also why I moved the green line. All right. So, next slide. All right? If we start on the left, bottom left, it's choppy, 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 right? Then you get a move. This wide range green bar tries to push it up. And then right around 10 a.m., you're thinking to yourself, sweet. We just took out this sloppy top right here at like 8.65, right? Right around 10 a.m. Okay, and then this nasty, nasty red bar comes in. Honestly, very unexpected. Why am I talking about this red bar? I'm talking about this red bar at 10 a.m. because unexpected things absolutely do happen in trading. Absolutely they happen. It's why we have stop losses and it's why we're not right all the time, okay? That is, there's, you can't do anything about that. If you were trying to take this trade on a breakout over this area here, you know, 865, and that red bar came in, hopefully your stop loss holds. That's all you can say, because it's not 100% accurate, right? Then we pull back, and then around 1030-ish, we start climbing up. And then you get a wide range green bar right at the beginning of this um, pink box here, right? This wide range bar. What's that wide range bar do? takes out that red bar to the left at 10 a.m., right? So this wide range bar right around 1045-ish takes out the 10 a.m. bar, okay? And then we get what? Slowing of momentum, okay? And that's kind of what you would expect because when you look at this right here, right around that 11 o'clock area, okay, this stock was actually bouncing quite significantly from just before 1030, right? You see that bottoming tail, that big green bar bottoming tail right around 1020, 1025. Stock moves up, 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 wide range bar, and then right here where it says slowing momentum. Well, it should be slowing momentum. The stock just moved up a lot. So what we're seeing here is not unusual or unexpected. That's normal. Why am I saying this? Because if you are in this trade long and you see this little consolidation, this slowing momentum, doesn't mean you should get out. It simply means, hey, my stock has done such a darn good job, it needs to take a little break before it continues higher. I, I repeat myself a lot, but I'm gonna do it one more time. Why am I telling you this? Because once you see this, you should not be scared. You should actually feel relieved. Why? Because it's doing what it needs to do to continue the move up. This is exactly where traders start doing bad things, right in this little pink box. This is the trouble zone for traders. They get a wide range bar, they're like, yes, 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 yes. And then what happens? They have five, 10, 15, 20 minutes to think about all the stupid things they're gonna do. And the stupid things they're gonna do are take a quarter off. And then a quarter becomes a third. And then the third becomes a half. And then instead of taking a half, they take two thirds off. And they're like, but, but, it, but, but that red bar right there said it was gonna, but, but it's gonna but, 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 pull, 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 pull back. And all of a sudden, instead of getting this wide range green bar right where it says range expansion, instead of getting that bar with a full lot, you have less than a half a lot left. Tell me I'm wrong. You know you do it. You know you do it. Yet, everything inside this pink box suggested it's all good, man. Stay in it. Trust me, everything's good. But you couldn't handle 10 or 20 minutes of sideways consolidation. You're like, but, but, but if it pulls back and I don't make any money, even though my goal is $1,000 on this trade and I'm only up 500, but at least if I sell half, I'll make 200 bucks. And then by the time a stock actually does go higher and eventually hits target, instead of making 1,000 bucks, you make 500 or 300 or 400 because you took so many shares off during this what ended up being a very bullish consolidation. Just don't do it, man. 
These bar by bars are bullish. Yes, it says slowing of momentum, but that doesn't mean weakness. It just means the stock is a little bit tired and it needs to take a break before continuing its journey to your target. Stick with it, okay? So then wide range expansion bar comes in. We move up, topping tail, what do we have? Right before this red box topping tail, right? It says topping tail here. We had two prior topping tails. Is that shocking? No, look how far we are from the moving average. Topping tail, topping tail, topping tail. There are three in a row on these topping tails and we are far from the moving average. Guys, what's happening? Is this stock bearish? No, it's not bearish. Why am I being so adamant? Because you guys are doing stupid, stupid things when you see this stuff, okay? This stock is still very, very bullish, okay? It pulls back like it should because it needs a break and then continues to bounce back up. All right, it needed a break. We know this because it's so far from the moving average. Bounces back up, bounces back up. Again, it gets far from the moving average, pulls back, bounces back up. It's very powerful when you look at that wide range green bar, you look at the support, the narrow body bar right there, okay? is very bullish, narrow range bar, whatever, okay? And we bounce up, but now, now you need to listen to me clearly. Now we have to pay attention. You see, the high from this pink box on the left to this topping tail is pretty significant, right? One of these is like 869 and the other one's like 875. That's significant. From this 875 to like 877, Okay, not as significant, but still okay. But when we go from this pivot right here, okay, it's the, this pivot right before the topping tail red line. The topping tail red line is at the very top of the chart here, the previous pivot to that pivot. It's not a significant new high. Note what is happening here. The momentum is slowing down. The stock is no longer able to put in significant new highs. And in doing so, it's not even far from the moving average at this point. So you can't make that excuse. Like back down here to the left where the topping tail was and the wide range expansion bar was, we were far from the moving average, right? But up at the top where it says topping tail plus double M top, we're not far from the moving average at all. And we're still unable to put in a significant new high. What happens? We pull back. Okay, the pullback's not terribly bearish. It's getting more bearish, right? But then we bounce again and we retest the high. We retest the red line. This is, becomes the double top. It becomes an M top. So now we no longer put in a higher high. We actually put in a lower high where it's an absolute transition here. There's no question about it. Not only do we put in a lower high double top, momentum has already been slowing, then a wide range igniting bar comes in and takes out the pivot low. See where it says potent here? There's an arrow on that potent. It's a wide range red bar. It takes out this bullish green line, goes below it, and then continues lower one, two, three, four, five bars down. Range expands on this red bar here and this red bar. There are two wide range red bars, the potent bar and then the arrow bar that it's pointing to. But it's also six bars down. So yes, it's very potent, but it's six bars down. Which means we're still bearish, but short term bullish, very short term, right? So we bounce back up. This is the short-term bullishness I'm speaking of, short-term. Weak reversal. It is. It's a very weak reversal. This is not a potent reversal. A potent reversal would have touched the moving average. So where it says weak or reversal, like I said, if it was potent, it would have gone back to 874, which is minor price resistance and the declining moving average and a 50% retracement. But it didn't. It failed long before that, well under that area. Very weak. Drops, but note the wide range red bar here on crazy volume, it leaves a massive bottoming tail. Increased volume plus the bottoming tail is supply 
is decreasing. Demand is increasing. Supply decreasing means sellers are leaving the building. Sellers are getting tired. Sellers are saying, I got what I came for, right? The people who shorted this up here are like, hmm, this is a pretty nice move. There's a little support to the left. I got what I came for. Cover, cover, cover. Pushes the stock back up, and then you get a green confirmation bar, so you have support, a bottoming tail, increased volume, green bar, likely move higher. Chops, moves back up. This is how you read a chart, okay? And like I said, try to cover the future so that you won't know what it says before you think it. See, if you know what it says, your opinion's gonna be biased. See, when you trade in real time, you don't know what the future looks like because it hasn't happened yet. So make sure you cover the future because it's going to make you more biased when you're doing this. Guys, it's, it's like doing your times tables when you're in first grade, right? Or whatever grade they do times tables in, okay? It's like, you know, two times 12 is 24. You got to know what, boom, 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 boom. You have to know when you look at these bars, oh, yes, that's a wide range expansion bar. Oh, yes, that's a slowing of momentum and it's supposed to happen there. Or it's a slowing of momentum and it shouldn't happen there. Oh my gosh, that's a powerful engulfing bar. Oh my gosh, that's a narrow body bar in an area that I wouldn't expect it to see. So momentum might be slowing where it shouldn't be. Oh, that's a strong reversal. Oh, that's a weak reversal. Look at the volume associated. This has to become unconscious competence. Unconscious competence. And the only way to get it there is repetition. It's the only way to get it there. Okay? So this is a slide we saw, I think, a week ago. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's take a look at this one. Okay? So this is a slide where we look at the top left and we see a big old topping tail, right? It's a big old topping tail red bar. And then a little bottoming tail bar and a big red bar. And what happens? This red bar gets engulfed by a green bar that gets engulfed by a red bar. What is the message here? The message changed, right? It went from, hmm, this green bar engulfing this red bar is actually kind of bullish. Now, the overall environment is bearish, but this green bar, three or four, four bars into the day, this green bar, might change my opinion. So what are we thinking right there? We are thinking the next bar is very important. That's what I think when I see a green bar that engulfs a red bar. I am thinking to myself, wait and see what happens on the next bar because that's likely gonna tell me the next direction of the stock. If it's green, then the trend is not as bearish as I thought and we might have to either stop out on this or we might think about going long possibly. But if the next bar is red, which it is, right? It goes red bar, green bar, red bar. It's a bull sandwich. The next bar is red. The message is clearly lower prices are going to happen. Why am I saying this? Because let me make a picture for you. Hold on. Give me a second. Because now you're looking at that and you're going, what a lovely entry under this green line. Great entry under here. Guys, this is just confirmation of weakness. We already knew the stock was weak. We saw the topping tail. We saw the gap down. We saw the wide range red bar. This just confirms how weak it actually is. So you're going to get in right there, which is like $30.85. Your stop loss is going to be like $31.25, like a 40 cent stop loss. And this thing just drops like a stone, goes down to like $29.20. So you got like a $1.70 move out of this thing on what would be probably a 40 to 50 cent stop loss. So you got at least three to one, maybe four. That's a wonderful entry. It's a confirmation of strength or a weakness on an already weak stock. Beautiful. Drops, we see a bottoming tail. Bottoming tail is not uncommon considering the stock has already dropped almost $3. Now guys, $3 for a $30 stock is a lot. It's 10%. The bounce, not surprising. The retest shows weakness. This is somewhat unexpected, right? The level and depth of this retracement here, let me move this green line out of the way. The level and depth of retracement of this topping tail is a concern, but it does leave a topping tail, 
Okay, so now we have to wait because this is a potent green bar and the topping tail is also very bearish, but we also have bottoming tails down here on the green line. So now we have to wait and wait and wait. And then we get another bottoming tail on the green line, then another topping tail right after 11.30 a.m. There's a topping tail. And then another bottoming tail like 11.45, chop, chop, and then right here. You get that good entry because notice what's happening here. Lower high on the topping tail. Then this bottoming tail at 11 a.m., this bottoming tail at 11 a.m. suggests higher prices. The prices don't go higher though. They actually retest the low. And then we bounce again at 11.35. We bounce again at 11.35, but we leave a topping tail. And then we retest the low. What is happening here? Every time the stock tries to bounce, sellers step up. Every time. This is like the third or fourth time. So we are continually confirming the weakness of this over and over and over again. So then when you finally get below the low of the day, it becomes a sell setup or a breakdown, whatever you want to call it, a breakdown, okay? So you're going to get in there at like 29.10, 29.15. Your stop loss is going to be like 29.60 or something like that. And boom, the breakdown turns climactic. Oh my goodness, it's the greatest thing that can ever happen to a trade. Anytime you're in a trade that turns climactic, it's wonderful, right? Because that's the most it's going to go. Now you know exactly where to get out. The move is over. Multiple wide range bars, huge volume, massive bottoming tail. A good trader will recognize what is happening and they will get out of the short and then go long. A good trader will recognize this. They will exit the short position and they will hop at it on a long once they get the confirmation. Bounces back up, pulls back, leaves a higher low and this thing's off to the races going higher. That's how you read the chart, all right? I'm going to leave it there, guys, okay, because we're kind of running out of time here. Conclusion, always read the chart. Bar by bar analysis. Oh, I made like so many mistakes. Oh, it's killing me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Bar by bar analysis is powerful and is meant to help you discern the actual next move in the stock or the market. Don't get emotional, okay? Problem is climactic move without hitting target. Well, Jordan, if you hit, a, if you got a climactic move without hitting target, then your stop loss was too big or you misjudged the average trading range. Why? Because a climactic move means typically two, three, four, five times average trading range, correct? A, clim a genuine climactic move is typically three to five times average range. So if you can't hit your target on a 3x average range or a 4x average range, then you, something, you made a mistake somewhere. But back to the point at hand, don't get emotional, right? Don't get emotional, okay? Do not allow your obsessive need to be right to cloud your vision, okay? Many traders, you guys, you just ignore these powerful signals to stay in the trade because you need to be right, or your ego clouds you. Don't do it. Read the chart. It's what it's there for. The opposite's also true. They'll look for the tiniest reason to exit a trade. Neither of these are productive, meaning the chart usually gives you reasons to stay in, but every once in a while, you'll see a small reason to get out, but it's not a big enough reason, and you'll use that to get out. Fight the urge, all right? Fight the urge. Ultimately, guys, Bar by bar analysis forces traders to confront what is actually happening in real time. This will help you become a more objective trader, which should help you help turn you into a more profitable trader and rid yourself of the subjectivity. All right. So we ought to end it there, guys. I'd like to talk 20 more minutes about this, um, but Unwall has uh, a lecture coming up here as well. So I hope that you guys learned a little bit about bar by bar analysis and how it can help you stay in a trade, but also just be more objective about what you're actually seeing. Yes, it's going to take some practice. It's absolutely going to take some practice to get good at this. But the more charts you read, the more charts you rip down and break down, you will get better and better at this and your trading will become a lot more accurate. On top of it, once you get to the unconscious competence level, it will also help you discern patterns quicker. It's not just when you should get in or get out. 
right? The pattern will become much clearer, much quicker to you. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope it makes you a better trader. I am Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.